Hey folks, uh, there are two main concepts today. Let's just zoom out here for a second. We're dealing with th uh, 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles. Thanks for watching my video. Let me just zoom in on this for a second. And I, I was thinking about uh, how do people manufacture stuff made of stainless steel or aluminum? Um, I was just working on my my suburban yesterday and the differentials filled with gears and parts that have to fit together just right. It's pretty amazing um, how they design and ma manufacture all that stuff. But, but a lot of times it'll start with this big chunk of metal, this, they call it billet, um, this piece of stainless steel right here. And you notice the end is a square. Uh, so they need to be able to deal with the dimensions of this square very accurately. And you might say, wait, I thought we were talking about triangles. Why? Why do you just focus in on a square? Well, uh, 45, 45, 90 triangle comes from a square. So I just wanted you to see this. I have my tools turned on to, oh, I want this guy right here, the square. That would just make a rectangle. I know it looks like a square, but I want to make sure it's a square. Okay. So I go ahead and I, I add my square in here. Don't like its position. So let's see if we can move it down here. Okay. So I want you to add that to your notes. Again, you might be saying, Hmm, I thought we were talking about triangles. Why did you draw a square? Well, let's draw in the diagonal, just one of them Draw in one diagonal. Now think with me for a moment. If this was a square, we know all the sides are equal. So why don't you go ahead and put tick marks on all the sides and we would know that we have a right angle because it's a square. And then a diagonal is going to bisect the angles because it's a rhombus uh, and a square at the same time. Here we got a 45 degree angle here. We got a 45 degree angle over there. So if you wanted to, you could go back through and kind of erase this triangle. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to erase this triangle, but I'm just going to focus on this triangle right up here. And let's say for just a moment, just, just one second here, let's just say <clears throat> this square right over here. Come on, move over. This square was like six inches by six inches. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to add six inches right up here. Okay. Right where that, where that little tick mark is. So put six inches right there and then put six inches here. If it makes you more comfortable, put six everywhere, put it, put them around the sides. Now the diagonal is going to be longer than six inches, right? Because it's, across from the biggest angle, it's across from the 90 degree angle. This is called the hypotenuse over here. These are the legs, right? So let's just put down leg here, leg there. Now, after I talk about this and prove how big this side is, we're going to try to use a shortcut. So we're not going to do this work. We're not going to do the Pythagorean theorem every time. I'm just doing it with, with these numbers here, six and six. Um, they are always going to be 45, 45, 90 triangles though. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and put down six squared plus six squared equals C squared. Okay, so we're gonna try to find out how big is this side over here. And I'll just say it one more time. When you see a 45, 45, 90 triangle, you're not gonna do the Pythagorean theorem. You're gonna do a little shortcut that I'm about ready to show you, okay? So let's put that in our notes. We're gonna look for a shortcut to answer these questions, okay? So shortcut. All right, so what do we get? We get, uh, well, here, here's what I could do. How many six squares do I have? I have two of them, right? So I have two times six squared. Okay. That's equal to C squared. Now, how do I get C all by itself? You might be kind of nervous about that. Like, why am I not squaring the six? I get 36, don't I? 36 times two would be 72. I'll come back to that in just a second. Okay. Uh, so then I take the square root here and I'll, I'll do more arithmetic with this in just a bit. So what do I got? I, and I'm going to rearrange these, you know, it doesn't matter what order we multiply in. So I'm going to put down six squared here times two. Okay. So, cause I've got two, six squares. Would that always be the case? Let's say, let me change colors. Let's say this was like five long. You know, you order up a piece of uh, five by five by 10 feet or something like that. Five inches by five inches, 10 feet long of that stainless steel stuff over there. So would we still have five squared twice? Absolutely we would. Right. So every 45, 45, 90 triangle is going to work like this. Now, why is this beneficial? Well, I could write that as shoot. I wanted to be in red. I hope that's okay with you. I'm going to stick with black. I could separate those two square roots and write them as six squared, two, uh, two, and then have, you know, the square roots over them. Uh, that's what C is equal to. Now, what is the square root of six squared? Six 
What's the square root of two? I don't know, so I'm gonna leave that alone. And <clears throat> look what I get. I get this side right over here is six square root of two, okay? So we don't really need to do Pythagorean theorem. If I saw six, then I would know the other leg is six, then I would know the hypotenuse is six times the square root of two. So in question number two, I don't know, I probably could have put question one up there, but question number two, here's what I want you to do. I want you to try to find out how big is this side right over here. I know in, in that question in McGraw-Hill, they don't ask you that. And then I want you to try to find the hypotenuse, okay? Put the video on pause, do what you can, and then come back and I'll try the problem with you. All right. Hey, thanks for doing that, folks. Well, if this is 12, this is 12 up here. Why do I know that? Because it's a 45 and then there's a 90. So that means this has to be 45 right down here, right? So it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's what we're talking about. We're identifying, hey, we got a 45, 45, 90 triangle. What do we know about it? Well, the legs would be equal to each other because it came out of a square. This was a whole square just cut in half, right? Okay. Now, how big is the hypotenuse? It is 12 times the square root of two. So to go from a leg to the hypotenuse, we multiply by the square root of two. Please add that to your notes right now. Now, if you knew what the hypotenuse was, to go from the hypotenuse to the leg, we would divide by the square root of two, okay? So we're gonna divide by the square root of two to go the other way. So when I look down here, let me scroll down here to question number three. My picture's kind of in the way. Uh, you see that one leg is three square root of two. Well, this leg has to be three square root of two also, right? So let's put down three square root of two right there, all right? And now here's what I want you to do. Put the video on pause again. See if you can figure out how big the hypotenuse is. So, so look up here to go from a leg to hypotenuse. What do we do to go from the hypotenuse to leg? Which one are we doing? Are we going from the hypotenuse to leg? Are we going from the leg to the hypotenuse? Okay. Hey, thanks for putting that on pause. Let me highlight something here real quick. So to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, right? We're going to multiply by the square root of two. And that's what we're doing on this problem again, right down here. We're going from the leg to the hypotenuse. Now you might say, wait a minute, it has a square root of two on it. Doesn't that mean it's the hypotenuse? No, I mean, this length could be any length we want. When we manufacture this steel out here, they probably have a, a very set piece, you know, set dimension here. You can't order it up in whatever you want. Um, it's up to you to cut it down to size, however you want to do that. And, and so I, I don't know, let's say this side happened to be three square root of two. And now they're asking, what is the length of the diagonal going across this way, right? So to go from a leg to the hypotenuse, we got to multiply by the square root of two. So three square root of two times the square root of two. That's what I'm talking about over here with arithmetic and simplifying in your notes. This is a little tricky to do, right? So we get what? Three square root of two squared, or we get three times the square root of four, or we just get three times two. Okay, so three times two is six. So this length right over here is six. All right. Uh, so I hope I'm making that clear how some of that arithmetic works. I want to show you one other example. Okay, so let's put down like example number, I don't know where we at four, maybe if we count that as one, two, three, let's, let's do example four. So let's say you had a, a 45, 45, 90 triangle, and I'm going to orient it as weird as I can. Okay. And so here's our right angle. Here's our 45 degree angle. Uh, and let's say this time you knew what the hypotenuse was. Okay. The hypotenuse is 10 long. All right. So you knew the diagonal of the steel was 10 long and you wanted to know how big is the side length. So let's say that's 10 right there. All right. Well, to go from the leg to the hypotenuse, we multiply by the square root of two. So to go the other way, to go from the hypotenuse to the leg, we've got to divide by the square root of two. All right, so this is going to be 10 divided by the square root of two. Now McGraw-Hill might not accept this answer. This is again, coming back to the arithmetic and simplifying business. So how do I simplify this? You know, how do I divide? Well, if they don't want a decimal, like if, you know, if it, if it says round in the nearest tenths place, then you just go to Desmos and do 10 divided by square root of two. But if it doesn't allow you to do that, if it says fi find it as an exact value, you've got to do something called rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of two over the square root of two. I end up with 10 square root of two because you multiply numerator times numerator when you're multiplying fractions and denominator times denominator. 
So I get square root of two times square root of two, which I kind of did a little example right over here. How do you do square root of two times square root of two? It becomes two. So I, I've got two now in the denominator. That's, that's better. Denominators are really important in arithmetic. We don't want our denominator to have a radical in it because it makes it an irrational number, which makes it very difficult to deal with. So let's try to rationalize it. And look how simple this comes out. Two goes into 10 five times. So I get five square root of two. Now, what's the importance of rationalizing the denominator? In, in today's day and age, when you got calculators, you know, everywhere, you've got computers, all that kind of stuff, maybe not so important, but McGraw-Hill might not take your answer as 10 square root of two over two. Hey, thanks for watching video one. I want you to finish uh, the problems up until you stop seeing 45, 45, 90 triangles, then come back and watch video two. Thanks for watching.